There is nothing better than getting called by like handsome by an old lady. There's well, there's like an 85 year old woman named Pauline that lives in Franklinton. I was wearing shorts like this. I came out of my office and she just goes, "Be careful now." <laughs> Travis Haywisher. You blew it already. <laughs> Haywisher? I think you can put an extra H in Travis. How like ho becomes hay? Germans. I don't know. But Germans. Oh, you're German? Yeah. I'm German. They too. got bad ideas. <laughs> That's why my first name Eric. Your first name is Eric? Yeah. I thought your real name was Jerry Suzuki. <laughs> like, Todd Pontiac. Todd, yeah, Todd Pontiac. <laughs> Terrence Hyundai. This is the main TV that I watch. Okay. I don't have any streaming services. <laughs> I just watch Ted TV. So it's like getting to be so in. It's, only... like, it's like being in like the Seinfeld kitchen or like yeah. the friend's apartment. Well, I got to be honest, dude. I'm a little intimidated for this one. Um, What's that? Because you're actually funny. <laughs> I feel like this is going to test like all my powers that I've gained over the last several months. You're funny, man. You know, Don't be so thirsty for it. So just, <laughs> just fucking bear with me. That's all I'm saying. Just bear with me. Talk about your start in comedy. Is it like, did it start as like a defense mechanism like it did for me? One of my friends like tore a flyer off a telephone pole on High Street. We were like walking around drunk and put it in my pocket. And I didn't notice that till the next day. And it was like a comedy contest. I just kept looking at it every day and being like, what if I, what if I did that? Right. What if I tried that? And I wrote some jokes. I got like, se- I got like six or seven out of 10. Ooh. And that was thrilling. <laughs> I was like, I I was like I'm doing worst. this again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Me and Hakeem tried to go to a fucking sign up for a PowerPoint, drunk PowerPoint last night, and uh, they rejected you. We got, we got. The- <laughs> They're like, these guys no. don't look funny. I've, never, I've not done one, but I'm doing one uh, end of May. Do you want to borrow my presentation? What is yours? My presentation is on bushcrafting. It's an extreme form of camping. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah so- I'm not a regular white person that knows about camping and shit. Have you heard about bushwhacking? <laughs> It's the um, same thing. I've got, some, I've got some ideas, but I don't know if they've shaped up yet. One of them is Batman is a boomer fascist. They don't play defense in the NBA anymore, which is what I think is secretly a code for racism. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the one I'm probably going to end up doing is why Hamilton sucks. Mm. Ooh. Spicy. That one. <laughs> it, it feels like the equivalent of like you had a substitute teacher and they come in and they're like, you guys rap? like rap? <laughs> Like, let me tell you about the first rapper. His name was Bill Shakespeare. And then he, like, turns his chair and his hat backwards. Lynn manuel Miranda is, like, now the world's youth pastor. He's not even white. No. Despite the music. You're doing a comedy series with Lawbird, right? Yes. Um, I can't go there. But. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. We Why I can't go to Lawbird? Yeah. I was on a date there, and my date convinced me to leave with our beers. And then, uh, I, and, yeah. then, and then I left my debit card there the next day, and the lady was, like, ready for me. Is it intimidating to, like, tell jokes to a hammer person 10 inches from your face? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, the it's called stand-up from the waist up, so we do jokes from behind the bar. I think somebody asked me the other day, like, um, like, are you worried about hecklers? Because they're so close, I'm just like, no, it's almost like a heckle-proof show because no one's in the dark. It's less intimidating for me to look out and see everybody than to be like on stage, like blinding lights, and then like everybody else in the dark. Why would you book me? I'm glad you brought it up in private. This is a great <laughs> place to discuss it. What's on, what's on the Hakeem Rider? All right, I'm gonna definitely need body armor. Uh huh. Um, I'll probably need some land grab, land grab beer. You need to buy some HakeemsArtStuff.com merch and um, Ozium. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is. Quite a pitch. <laughs> I get your mediocre comedy and have to basic grocery shop for you. Yeah. Something about being like behind the bar <clears throat> a little bit that's like kind of holding court. Mm-hmm. And for me, especially as a person who like books it, hosts it every time, like I'm looking out on each show and it's like, there's somebody I slept with, there's somebody <laughs> I used to work with. It's like a reverse intervention that I threw for myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I accidentally invited people to be like, come be like, Travis, we're worried about you. It goes against the principle that, like, you know, the bartender is supposed to be listening to your stories. Quiet, everyone on stage. Yeah. I came to you and asked for advice, me and Brian. What did I say? You said, write so many jokes that you have to get on stage and tell them. Yeah, all right. I'm proud of that advice uh, after the fact, despite the fact that we created you as a comedian. (laughs) So I'm very conflicted. I think you, if I knew at the time how much validation you didn't need creatively. 
man, you just reminded me I saw a guy at Seven Sun this weekend that was like, I heard you guys are comedians and came over to me and Sean Somerville, and that's always the start of something bad. Okay. And he was like, I thought if I ever did stand up, this would be what I would say to a heckler. I would say, not only are you a piece of shit on this planet, but any other plane or realm you would ever be in, you're a piece of shit. And I was like, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> your entire approach to stand up is what you would say in case somebody heckled you. <laughs> it was fucking wild. But you're anyway. definitely going to get heckled with that approach. To yeah. so the second one, you go, You're a dingleberry. Yeah. <laughs> you're, the, yeah. you're the excess poop that's hanging on by a thread. I was like, Go to an open mic and listen and watch. Right. And that, that, that includes. Watching what doesn't work. I'm amazed at like golf players that can just like hit some a horrible fucking shot and mm -hmm. just like come back from that. Yeah, I'm sure it's got to feel like just death when you when well, you send a joke that doesn't sell. No, it doesn't, right? Because there's there's something beautiful about that, right? Mm -hmm. There's something about the sound that a joke makes when it doesn't get loud. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, when somebody in the crowd makes a noise, like the joke doesn't land, you're yeah. like, ooh, baby. <laughs> 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 it's like it I don't think I've ever bombed sober. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, like, because that's where it goes awry. Like, your jokes are bad because a drunk person delivered them. And I got on stage and I was like, okay, and everybody's talking. I mean, like, it wasn't a good environment for the show anyway. Everyone's talking and I'm just like, okay, you just gotta, you just gotta power through. And like, I remember telling the first joke and be like, okay, good to go. Never happened before or since. I remembered every single one of my jokes just the first part. I literally told about eight or nine only <laughs> setups. And every time I got to this to the punchline, I couldn't remember. It. Slumped against the bar and just lit a cigarette. I was just like, like shell shocked. I was just like, what the fuck happened? And then my girlfriend at the time, she comes running over. And she's like being very supportive. It was kind of sweet. But she was just like, that's, that's so hard. Like, how are you supposed to be expected to do your jokes up there? Yeah, then this guy right behind me, he was talking the entire time, and then he had the nerve to say, and then like, this guy comes walking over, and she goes, him, you. <laughs> she goes, tell him what you said to, and he goes, oh, I, I said you weren't funny. I was like, Summer, did you just bring the heckler over to me? <laughs> like, Mikey yeah. just fell asleep while I was talking. <laughs> Full stop. Did he, did he just fall, did like, he he fall did. asleep? He did, he did. Bro, no <laughs> way. Full, full on like your gram gram resting her eyes. What you got coming up? What you want the people hmm. to know? What do you want to sell? Do you have products <laughs> to sell? Oh yeah, I have a book. Kaylee oh, dies God. tragically in a rental scooter accident. <laughs> Keaton dies tragically in a rental scooter accident. Keenan <laughs> dies tragically in a rental scooter accident. You got Hakeem in there? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's... Let's, let's, wow, let's racist. <laughs> this book's mostly about fictional Oh, he woke kids. up. Mikey's yeah. up. Mikey's up. Because I'm not going to be a guy that looks like <laughs> this, <laughs> making fun of <laughs> 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 They won't. Michael makes love just like he plays video games, mashing a bunch of things and hoping it works out for the best. <laughs> wow. You can't play video games with all those paperweights. <laughs> I mean, buy a Hamish Farm shirt if you like it. I'd love for you to buy a ticket and come out to see Lawbird shows. Don't stand up from the waist up. Thanks for coming, Dick. Thanks, man. It was awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. You weren't really intimidating, were you? No. Like that again? No. <laughs> Never, dude. I'm the fucking biggest thing in town. Like, all right, maybe you can try to find something in between being intimidating and being. Yeah, yeah. And so, who knows when?